the US government decides to create an army of zombies to conquer the entire civilized world. <laughs> A woman lives a boring life in a small Romanian town with her elderly sick father. She is always tired, and nothing remarkable happens to her. But one day, a powerful explosion shakes the town. The woman doesn't understand what happened. She goes out onto the balcony and exposes her hand to the liquid dripping from the sky. Her skin becomes covered in strange bumps. The woman falls to the floor and transforms into a zombie. Then she rushes out into the street, where there are already many other zombies, and preys upon the first victim who will stop the zombie virus before it takes over the entire planet. <laughs> Military personnel and gas masks immediately arrive in the town, attempting to destroy the zombies with weapons, but they fail to contain the invasion. The US government is well aware of what is happening in the Romanian town of Roshnov. American General Carter has even come up with a solution to the zombie problem, but assembling an experienced team is necessary for the mission in Roshnov. The first candidate is Jack Stone, a capable man, in every aspect. He fought in Iraq for five years, committed something unforgivable, and is now serving a life sentence in prison. But he has a young daughter whom he dreams of seeing. If offered freedom after the trip to Roshnov, Jack will certainly agree to participate in this dangerous mission. However, the government is most concerned about ensuring that no one suspects the true reason behind the transformation of people into zombies. General Carter will also go to Romania and attempt to conceal the horrifying truth. The next member of the team will be John McKellen, known as the Mad Dog. He is an explosives expert. He could build a lethal weapon just with a, a glass and a pencil sharpener. Dragan Illich is chosen for the role of sniper. He has a rich military experience and is a professional in his field. The final member of the team is Eden Shizuka, a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat. If the team runs out of ammunition, her assistance will be invaluable. To motivate the team members to carry out the most dangerous mission, the government will allocate $2 million to each of them. They would do anything for money. So the money we offer them will help keeping their mouths shut. However, Carter is not entirely sure if any of them will survive. But what secret is the US government hiding so carefully? It seems they are planning to wipe an entire city off the map to eliminate both the zombies and any potential surviving witnesses. Time is running out for the operation, as the zombies could break out of the city and infect everyone. Only a certain Dr. Newman could have invented a cure for the virus, but he is no longer alive. Dr. Newman's daughter could have also helped with the vaccine, but she is impossible to find. She knows the truth about the origin of the virus and is hiding from the US government. What is she so afraid of? The toxic cloud over Roshnov has already dissipated, which means new zombies cannot appear due to precipitation. However, anyone can become infected by a bite. The government representative feels uneasy about the plan to destroy the city, but there is no other way. May God forgive us all. In Roshnov, an American plane arrives at a military airbase with the entire team. Longtime friends John McKellen and Dragan Illich step out of the plane and discuss the mission. It turns out they are tasked with detonating a nuclear power plant. John has seen a lot, but this mission seems to him the most horrifying. Dragan urges his friend to forget about morality and think about the money. Master of hand-to-hand -hand combat, Eden Shizuka, and Jack Stone are also already at the base. The team meets with General Carter, who explains how to infiltrate the nuclear power plant while avoiding the zombie hordes. Once inside, you're on your own. Mm-hmm. Just the way I like it. <laughs> the bomb will be prepared in advance, and the team will only need to place it correctly and set the timer. Then the team will have an hour to return to the base and evacuate by helicopter. They will be taken to a safe location until the radioactive dust settles. If they fail to complete the mission within an hour, they will have only themselves to blame. For now, each of them receives half of the fee. The remaining money will be given to them after the completion of the operation. However, the team is still unaware of General Carter's secret and deceit. The general takes Jack Stone aside. He appoints him as the team leader and asks him to take the mission very seriously. Jack learns an important detail of the case. It must be made to look like a terrible accident. The US government wants the city to appear to be exceedingly destroyed, leaving no witnesses to their secret mission. Jack doesn't delve into the reasons and consequences, he just wants to see his daughter as soon as possible after the operation. Carter promises that it will happen if Jack behaves. To monitor his actions, Carter will keep an eye on him through satellite cameras. Jack has no idea of the horrifying discoveries that await him during the operation. The mission begins as the team rides in an armored vehicle towards the nuclear power plant. John is plagued by dreadful feelings. The team sees a partially destroyed city and numerous neutralized zombies. Dragon is unsure if it's right to shoot unarmed mutants. Are the people or what? Jack believes that if everything goes according to plan, they won't have to shoot anyone. However, the feeling that something is amiss still lingers with the team. 
the team reaches the closed gates of the nuclear power plant without any incidents. There's something wrong. You can hear a pin drop. They don't need to blow up the gates as John takes the pass from a station worker who no longer needs anything in this world. The team smoothly enters the station. Meanwhile, the prey Eden of the United States contacts General Carter, demanding that the situation not attract the attention of the press. Carter promises that there won't be any problems. However, he is still unaware of what his team will do when they learn the truth about the origin of the zombies. At the nuclear power plant, Jack orders Dragon to take a sniper position and only shoot as a last resort. John is tasked with properly placing the bomb, while Jack and Eden patrol the station. Everyone takes their positions. John inspects the bomb and is horrified. I don't believe it. I'm gonna kill a son of a bitch. It turns out that the bomb is welded to the body of their vehicle, which they were supposed to use to escape back to the base. This means that Carter doesn't expect them to return at all. They have been set up. However, Jack believes that they can find another vehicle, return to the base, and show Carter their outrage. At that moment, Carter sees through the satellite cameras that a horde of zombies is approaching the nuclear power plant. He immediately orders the helicopter to be prepared for takeoff. Nobody intends to wait for Jack's team. From his position, Dragon also sees the zombie horde. He warns his friends and starts shooting. The others conserve their ammunition but find ways to deal with the monsters as well. One zombie quietly sneaks up behind Dragon. He doesn't react in time and gets bitten on the neck. After dispatching the zombie, it's already too late. After calming the mutants, the friends finish their work and prepare to leave. However, they have very few bullets left. In a shaky walk, the bitten Dragon approaches them. He hasn't started mutating yet but feels unwell. He asks the group to end his suffering. Don't make me back. Do it now. John tearfully embraces his best friend, promising that they will meet again, and with pain, fulfills his final request. Afterward, John is in a terrible state, but Jack reminds them that they need to escape from the station, if only to seek revenge on Carter for the betrayal. The team must find a vehicle and make their way to the base through a city teeming with zombies within an hour. John has a pessimistic mindset, but he follows the commander's orders. Jack himself doubts that a helicopter will be waiting for them at the base. He doesn't realize that today's unpleasant surprises are only just beginning. Carter continues to monitor the team's movements and learns that they are trying to escape from the station. Additionally, it is revealed that there are malfunctions with the evacuation helicopter. Carter becomes furious and orders his subordinates to fix the helicopter quickly. Meanwhile, the friends find a vehicle at the station. But I think it'll do. Of course. They realize that there will be numerous zombies on their way to the base, and they don't have enough ammunition for everyone. However, they have Eden, who doesn't need bullets to fight. They rely on her and embark on a dangerous journey. Soon, they encounter a horde of zombies and exit the vehicle. The mutants gather to attack the humans, but the team has enough ammunition to solve that problem. Once the path is cleared, they continue their journey. This is getting serious. Jack also understands that things are bad. After another encounter with zombies, his team will run out of ammunition, and the situation will become dire. Therefore, they head to a police station in hopes of replenishing their supplies. Zombies ambush them at the entrance, but they manage to deal with them. Several mutants roam around the station. John and Eden take care of them while the commander gathers weapons. In one of the corridors, Jack notices a zombie hunting someone behind bars. After eliminating the monster, he communicates with the survivor. Who are you? Open the cell, and I'll tell you. Jack doesn't rush to fulfill her request, and the girl reveals her name as Samantha Newman. She is the daughter of Dr. Newman, who worked for the US military but didn't want to cause harm to anyone. Jack releases Samantha from behind the bars, and the rest of the team joins them. The friends offer Samantha to escape with them. Carter observes their interaction through the cameras. He has been searching for Samantha worldwide and now plans to report the finding to the government. Samantha has yet to realize why she is receiving such intense attention. Meanwhile, a horde of zombies gathers near the police station. To reach their vehicle, the group will have to thin out the horde using their weapons. Jack teaches Samantha how to shoot, and she becomes a full-fledged member of the team. Warm feelings slowly develop between the young individuals. Then Jack reveals to Samantha that a nuclear explosion will wipe the city off the face of the earth soon to prevent the spread of the zombie virus. The information shocks Samantha. She explains that people turned into zombies not because of the virus but due to a more complex toxic substance developed by her father. The military became interested in his research and sponsored it. Problem is, my father wanted to save lives while they just wanted to destroy them. Before the events in Roshnov, Dr. Newman was working in his laboratory on his substance to enhance immunity. Carter visited him and asked for an update on the research. Newman had nothing to please him with. The test rats mutated and couldn't control their aggression. Moreover, the substance turned out to be lethal to the body. And at our current stage of research, our experimental specimens are nothing more than walking dead bodies. This news unexpectedly pleased Carter. He believed that with the substance, he could create perfect soldiers who would not perish in war. 
the general immediately ordered the substance to be administered to a test soldier. Newman strongly opposed it, but Carter forced him to comply. The doctor had to inject the substance into the soldier, who immediately started mutating. Afterward, Newman contacted his daughter Samantha and told her everything. He felt guilty and wanted to make amends. He instructed Samantha to hide from the government. The military could use her for their own purposes. Just leave, please. And don't try and contact me for any reason. With pain and hope for a better future, Samantha fulfilled his request. Dr. Newman secretly synthesized a vaccine against the toxin he had created, without the government's knowledge. He discreetly injected the vaccine into the test soldier and awaited the results. That's all Samantha knows. She believes that her father can fix everything. However, Jack has to disappoint her. The military discovered Newman's actions and attempted to eliminate him. But at the last moment, the doctor caused an explosion, destroying his entire laboratory and the test subject. However, the truth is that before the incident, Samantha's father had injected the vaccine into her. Now she is the only person in whom the secrets of Newman's work remain. It seems that this is why the military is hunting her. Samantha experiences the news about her father with great pain but composes herself because they need to keep moving forward. The saboteur John constructs a trap rigged with explosives for the zombies, giving the team the opportunity to escape from the police station and continue their journey. However, their path is soon blocked by a fence. While John sets up explosives on the fence, Jack tells his new friend that he agreed to this horrifying mission solely for the sake of meeting his daughter. Samantha empathizes with him. Saved my life. I'm good with it. At that moment, a massive horde of zombies approaches the group. The friends fend them off while John finishes setting up the bomb. Everyone gets into the car, but it fails to start. Suddenly, an explosion occurs, and Jack loses consciousness after being hit by a piece of the fence. In this state, he immerses himself in his military memories. It turns out that he was imprisoned for saving an Iraqi girl from American soldiers, which required him to eliminate his comrades, but he has no regrets. Eventually, Jack regains consciousness and quickly gets into the car. Throughout that time, his friends fought off zombies and protected their leader. The group repels the zombies and continues driving. Soon, the car runs out of fuel, but fortunately, there is a gas station nearby. While the group pushes the car towards the pump, zombies find them again. Another car arrives at the gas station. From it, an uninfected man, a woman, and a dog emerge. Together with the group of heroes, they rush into a building next to the gas station and barricade themselves inside. The new man is named Doug Mulligan. He was on vacation, so those freaks turned up. The tank of his car is also empty, so they can't drive away in it. Doug suggests waiting for the zombies to leave and then refueling the vehicles. But Jack disappoints him. There is no time to wait. They have less than half an hour until the explosion. Jack tells the newcomers about the nuclear bomb. They are shocked by such news. No one knows what to do next. The friends are almost ready to give up. But then Samantha decides to boost the team's morale. If we die here, Carter will have it all his own way. And then no one will ever know the truth about what happened in this city. The girl believes that there is a way out. Doug is impressed. He doesn't know who Carter is yet, but he already wants to meet him if all these horrors are happening because of him. Doug and his companion have also experienced many unpleasant things today. In the morning, they happily entered Roshnov, capturing their journey on camera. Suddenly, in the middle of the road, they saw a person lying down. Unaware of the situation, Doug approached him to offer help, but it turned out to be a zombie. It attacked Doug and pursued him even when he miraculously managed to get back into the car. The zombie would have killed Doug if his companion hadn't finished it off with a gun. The couple captured all of this on camera, which they now show to their new acquaintances. I kid you not. I almost did a little poo. Jack is inspired by this story. He starts to come up with a plan to reach the car. Suddenly, a zombie bursts into the building and bites Doug's companion. Eden takes care of it, but it's too late, the girl is infected. She confesses her love to Doug and takes her own life. Doug is devastated, and the others are horrified. Watching all this, John decides to take action. He promises to distract the zombies and give his friends a chance to escape. Eden joins him. Time to get serious, John. The two of them attract the attention of the zombies while the others run to Doug's car. The group successfully reaches the car and even manages to refuel it. However, a pool of gasoline spills onto the asphalt. The people in the car ask John and Eden to run towards them, but they are determined to fight until the end. John gets bitten, prepared to reunite with his friend Dragon. As a final act, he throws a lit lighter into the pool of gasoline. A powerful explosion occurs. John is gone, along with the zombie, and Eden's fate is unknown. The rest continue driving. Carter learns that the group almost managed to escape the city. Tell the special forces to be ready. I want the girl. Carter's helicopter is already repaired, and the villain is about to take off. Meanwhile, the friends reach the base and want to confront Carter, 
but he is one step ahead. He is Jack's daughter as a hostage. Jack tries to stay calm and negotiate with the villain. Carter is willing to exchange the girl for Samantha. She is taken aback by this turn of events, but Carter explains everything. You hold within yourself the secrets of your father's great work. The general wants to synthesize a substance from Samantha's body, invented by Dr. Newman, and continue the project. He plans to infect as many soldiers as possible and make the US Army unbeatable. The prospect is grim, but Samantha agrees to go with the military in exchange for Jack's daughter's release. And so it happens. The friends feel like all hope is lost. But suddenly, a giant mega zombie appears at the base, attacking Carter's soldiers. Conventional bullets are useless against it. This gives the entire group a chance to escape, except for Samantha. The mega zombie eliminates all the soldiers, including Carter. Doug, the girl, and the dog run to the helicopter while Jack goes back to save Samantha. She is being pursued by the mega zombie. The monster pounces on Jack and nearly overpowers him. But suddenly, battered and bruised, Eden appears behind the zombie. She survived the explosion and is ready to continue the fight. Meanwhile, Doug finds a grenade launcher in the helicopter. He asks his friends to make way and fires a projectile at the mega zombie. It explodes. <laughs> Take that, you son of a bitch! Friends get into the helicopter but they still have many problems. Zombies are approaching the base, and there are four minutes left until the explosion. Samantha is also worried that they have no evidence to tell the world about the horrors in Roshnov. But Doug has the video recording on the camera. This calms Samantha down a little. There are still many zombies in the city. They roam the streets unable to find a victim. A powerful nuclear explosion occurs. The helicopter with the guys manages to fly away. And what do you think? Could infected people be saved? Share your thoughts in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.